Welcome to the Oracle Data Provider for .NET Managed Driver Quick Start presentation. My name is Alex Key, and for the next few minutes, I'm going to talk about this new ODP.NET Managed Driver and why you would want to use it, and show you how you can quickly take an existing ODP.NET application and start using the Managed Driver. Let me talk a little bit about some of the key features in the Managed Driver. So some of the key features within the managed driver include you'll have fewer files to deploy, possibly as few as one file, the oracle.managedataaccess.dll file. If you're using distributed transactions, you'll have another additional DLL to deploy, but two should be the maximum you need to deploy in your assembly to run odp.net. Next major feature is ODP.NET is much smaller now, smaller than 10 megabytes, whereas before, with the unmanaged driver, you could have a few hundred megabytes in your deployment. So the amount of disk space you need to reserve for ODP.NET has greatly shrunk. Another key feature is side-by-side ODP.NET deployment has become much easier. There's no longer the chance of having DLL's uh, DLL mismatch occurring if you have different versions of ODP.NET whereas because before with the unmanaged version you'd have un unmanaged files therefore if the different, ver the different versions with the same name could be picked up within the path of your ODP.NET deployment but now with the new managed driver because they're fully .NET code You'll, you'll have the ability to do side-by-side -side without the chance of having any DLL collisions within your Oracle client. Another major feature is that the same oracle.managedataaccess.dll can be used for both your 32-bit as well as your 64-bit Windows deployments. So you no longer have to make sure that the DLL you're using is for 32-bit Windows or for 64-bit, you can use the same DLL for oracle.managedataccess.dll. And lastly, you'll be able to use code access security within .NET with ODP.NET fully so that you can manage your policies and your, and your uh, access control with ODP.NET. So how do you deploy with this new fully managed provider? It's pretty easy. If you have an existing ODP.NET application, what you're going to do is first add a reference to your oracle.managedataaccess driver. Next, you add the namespaces for odp.net managed driver to your application. And from there, you just have to configure net, your SQL net settings if you're using something like tnsnames.ora. If you're using Easy Connect, you can skip this step. Okay. On my desktop, I have the, OD, the managed ODP.NET beta zip file. I'm going to expand this and copy the oracle.managedataaccess.dll to the desktop. So now that I've extracted it to the desktop, I'm going to open up my existing ODP.NET application. And this existing ODP.NET application uses the unmanaged version. Why don't we run it and see that it actually works with the unmanaged version. So I'm going to hit F5 and see if it is able to extract the data from the Scott schema, the EMP table in the, the Scott schema, and it looks like it's working. So you can see that I'm using the unmanaged ODP.NET driver, the namespaces, and you can see I'm, I have it within my references as well. So let's get started moving to the, the fully managed driver. So how we do that is first, as we said in the steps, let's add a reference to it. So we're going to right click on references, choose add reference, and we're going to browse for the oracle.managedaccess.dll. And you can see, since I copied it to my desktop, it's right here on my desktop. I'm going to select that and say OK. 
Now we've incorporated that as part of our application. You can see that here. Now to make sure we start using that specific DLL, we're going to add the namespaces. So I'm going to uncomment these two lines, and you can see that the namespaces are oracle.manage dataaccess.client, giving you your standard ADO.NET command, connection objects, things like that, as well as oracle.manage dataaccess.types. That gives you access to Oracle specific types in ODP.NET. And it's very similar to the existing unmanaged namespaces. The only thing different is that we added the word manage. So I'm going to comment out the previous unmanaged namespaces just to make sure I'm using the fully managed one. And now I'm going to move on to step three. Step three was making sure I have my net, SQL net configuration settings correct. So we can see that we're using a TNS alias here. Alias for the network is ORCL. So in the old Oracle home, you would have that TNS names that ORA file in something like your Oracle home slash network admin directory. If we go to the desktop here, I already have a pre-created TNS file. And you can see it's it's a pretty easy to create file. Um, what we have within here is the service name, ORCL, which I also named as the same as the uh, alias, as well as the host name, which is the local machine and the port number. So we're going to take this file, and we have to put it in the application's working directory. So we're going to take the TNS file, copy it, and I'm going to copy it to this working directory. So that would be here under manage odp.net under the console bin and debug directory. Certainly this will vary depending on where your actual application is running but since I'm still running it as a project it's going to be in this bin debug directory of my console application. So now that I have my TNS names that or file here, I should be able to run it. I should run fine. As you can see, we've we've been able to query the database and pull data from it using the fully managed provider. Now, if you're using Easy Connect, as I mentioned before, you can skip this TNS names that aura. You can skip the copy of the TNS names that aura file if you want. You can use something like the following with Easy Connect, so that you don't need the file where I have listed the server, the port that it's using, as well as the service name. So if I run it here, you can see that we can connect again and extract data from the database using the Easy Connect uh, method with Fort Oracle. So that's it. That's all you need to do. If you would like to learn more about ODP.NET, feel free to visit the OTN.NET Developer Center at otn.oracle.com slash dotnet. Also, you can hear about the latest news and the latest happenings of Oracle.NET at our Twitter handle at Oracle D-O-T-N-E-T. And feel free to send me any questions you have about the beta or anything else related to Oracle's connectivity with .NET. Thank you for listening in and happy coding.